Sometimes I hear people saying nothing has changed. But for someone to grow up the way I grew up in the cotton fields of Alabama, to not be serving in the United States Congress, makes me want to tell them, come and walk in my shoes. My name is John Robert Lewis. I saw segregation, I saw racial discrimination, and I wanted to do something about it. John Lewis came from humble roots as the son of sharecroppers in Pike County, Alabama. As a young man, I think he was chosen by God for leadership. When I was growing up, I saw the signs that said white men, colored men, white women, colored women. I would ask my mother, my father, my grandparents, and my great-grandparents why. They would say, boy, that's the way it is. Don't get in the way, don't get in trouble. I got in trouble. There was something deep down within me moving me that I could no longer be satisfied or go along with an evil system. I remember standing with President Kennedy when I was 23. I met Dr. King when I was 18, Rosa Parks when I was 17. And all these people made me a better person, a stronger person. He organized freedom rides and sit-ins and voter registration drives. And he emerged as one of the most courageous and important student leaders of the American Civil Rights Movement. I was not concerned about uh, making history. I just wanted to change things. I have a dream to do. John was also one of the planners of the Great March on Washington. Brother John Lewis. And was the youngest speaker to address the audience on that historic day. We do not want our freedom gradually, but we want to be free now. I have never ever seen a crowd like that before. Never spoken to a crowd like that before. Wake up, America! Wake up! I was only 23 years old. One Sunday in 1965, he set out to lead a march from Selma to Montgomery. John Lewis led them out of the church on a mission to change America. We came here to protest an unjust system of denying blacks the right to vote. Our country will never, ever be the same because of what happened on this bridge. We're marching today to dramatize to the nation, dramatize to the world, that hundreds and thousands of Negro citizens of Alabama, but particularly here in the Blackbelt area, denied the right to vote. It's fate and history coming together in a single place. There are places and moments in America where this nation's destiny has been decided. Selma is such a place. We were determined, we were organized, we were disciplined, and we were committed to the way of peace, the way of love, the way of nonviolence. We were prepared to die for what we believed in. They stampede us with whips, nightsticks, and horses. They tear gas us. They turn our nonviolent protest into blood. I lost consciousness. Fifty years later, I don't recall how I made it back across that bridge. Their cause must be our cause too. It's all of us who must overcome the crippling legacy of bigotry and injustice. And we shall overcome. Five months later, Congress passed the Voting Rights Act. The American people were ready for the Congress and the President to act. We made them ready. All of the people should have a right to participate in the democratic process. They all should have that elementary right to register and vote. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 has been the lifeblood of the movement. America and the world need more of what is in John Lewis's heart. My philosophy is very simple. When you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you have a moral obligation to say something, to do something. Stand up, speak up, speak out. If not us, then who? If not now, then when? It's a question John Lewis has been asking his entire life. And generations from now, when parents teach their children what is meant by courage, the story of John Lewis will come to mind. An American who knew that change could not wait for some other person or some other time. It doesn't matter whether we are black or white, Latino, 
Asian American or Native American. It doesn't matter whether you're straight or gay. We are one people, we are one family, we are one house. We've been saying we just want to thank him for his service, his sacrifice. He's one of the people who made it possible for me to sit at this desk. Yeah. We all owe him an enormous debt of gratitude. May John Lewis's memory be a blessing for all of us. That'll do it for us on this Saturday morning. Enjoy your day, everyone. Stay safe.